I make a lot of videos for my different math courses. And if you're a student of mine, you're probably gonna spend a pretty non-trivial portion of your life sitting back and watching my math videos. So I want to make sure that that process is as efficient and as effective for your learning as it can be. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about just a few different tips for how to make the most out of watching my math videos. The first thing I wanna say is, what is the purpose of these math videos? Well, I believe it is to establish the foundational knowledge for our math courses. And what I mean by this is, it sets the, the beginning, the opening moves, the basic definitions, the basic theorems, a few different examples. It, it sets the beginning so that you can go off and do a lot of mathematics yourself. Because the, the best parts of mathematics are all of the parts where you are going away and you are working on problems and you are struggling through the process, the process of becoming a mathematician. It's a little bit like watching a YouTube video on juggling. That is a useful thing. It's, it's good to have videos that tell you the right way to juggle and tell you about different juggling patterns, but most of the effort when you're becoming a juggler is to actually go out and do a lot of juggling. And that's the case here in our mathematics courses. And these, these videos that I make are intended to give you the preliminary information that sets the stage that we can all go together and work on the harder, challenging, more problems that are gonna come outside of the video content. So have your expectations set. Don't expect miracles just from the videos alone. Now, the lovely thing about watching videos is that we don't have to watch them in a traditional way. We can pause our videos, we can rewind, we can go back over and over and over again until we believe that we have mastered the content. Know that this is absolutely not like watching a TV show, it's not something where I'm trying to entertain you and that you should just sort of be leaning back and watching me perform. It's something where you should be very actively engaged with the content matter, trying to justify it. Are all the things that I say true? Do I understand why Trevor has said this thing to me? Does it make sense in my own mind? And if you're not 100%, even if you're 90%, you should be pausing, you should be reflecting on it yourself, you should be processing, you should be asking questions like, why did he just say this? Does it make sense to me? And if it doesn't, you're welcome to rewind or to ask questions in the comments and to, to generally be engaged and that you feel that as you go through this video, the process is for you to master the different things that has been said. I also think that particularly if you're in one of my flipped classes or one of my online classes, it's a good idea to be taking some form of notes, but there's good ways and there's bad ways to be doing this. Uh, maybe one purpose of why we're taking notes is just so that we have a resource. Like say you come to class and, or you're drawing some problem on some homework assignment, that you have some resource that tells you what the basic ideas are gonna be and these, these videos are establishing the foundational knowledge. Now you've got a sort of hard copy version of them. Although perhaps this is not even the best point of it. Far more importantly, I think is that the process of writing down some notes for yourselves in your own words where you're pausing the video and you're reflecting on what's being said and you're trying to write things in your own words is a really important point in the learning process. And it starts to develop in our sense, ourselves the sense of a deep understanding of what is being said and start that process of putting it towards long-term memory. Of course, we're gonna have to keep on repeating these ideas and working through problems to really have it solidified, but, but taking notes is sort of a first step. And then on that vein, if notes are sort of quick summaries as what's being talked about, but I'll often guide you by writing things for myself in the video and you're like, I can just write those down, is don't just be writing things down. When you get to the end of a video or at the end of an example partway through the video, when you pause, take that time to reflect and see in your words, not my words, in your words, can you describe what just happened? And part of the problem is that I've been doing mathematics for a really long time. So for the most part, I say things with the right ways, in the right context, and all the right words, and everything puts together. And you could sit back and be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm following what Trevor's saying. That's making sense to me because I said it so nicely. But then if I get you to say it back to me, well, you don't have the familiarity. 
So you might make mistakes in some of the words and you might confuse concepts and little distinctions that, that you didn't, weren't even aware that was something you were confused about because I said it so nicely might be revealed to you as you go and try to summarize what happens. So you can sort of update your notes or even if you just sort of try to close your eyes and visualize the different things that happened, this is a very important step for really getting understanding and mastery of what we've just been talking about. Next up, I want you to test yourself. Don't trust in your own ability to understand and be able to reproduce what's just been stated. In fact, humans in general, myself very much included, are, are really bad at thinking we just deeply understood something that we just watched or that we'd be able to reproduce it at a later time. Humans are pretty good at being able to recognize things they've seen before. Like, if you watch this video a second time, you probably recognize all the points. But if I just put a black screen and ask you to immediately list all the points I just said down, well, some of us are gonna be able to do it, but, but sometimes we need to have that process of testing our memory. And in this category, we can also be thinking like, what is a good test question on this subject? Can I make my own question? What examples am I expecting to show up? And try those and see whether you can get those answers as well. Next up, I put this point here, but it's obvious, but easy for us to ignore, which is to be engaged. We're so used to, on our computers and on our phones, to have some video and we just sort of like, it's there. I do this all the time. I love having something on in the background, but kind of paying attention to it, but like not really. In truth, I'm doing something else. I'm playing on my phone or even I'm just sort of staring and watching it, but I'm like vegetating when I'm doing it and I'm off in my own mind or just nothing's going on. I don't want that for these videos. Don't even bother watching these videos if that is describing you because you're not gonna learn very much. You're, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I did my, my homework. I've checked off this list. Trevor told me to watch this video. I did it, power to me. But I don't really care about that. I want you to watch the video engage. So make sure you're in the mind space to be doing that, to be engaged. And then my final point is, is really interesting thing that comes out of the cognitive science of learning is that we need to space out our learning over time. And what I mean by this is that Suppose you have an hour to study some particular concept. You've got a choice. You can study it all in just one block. Or maybe you want to break it up into three 20-minute blocks. When you space it out over time, it actually feels really uncomfortable because if you leave it like a day or two, then half of the time when you're doing it is like recalling what these different ideas were and you kind of like struggle to do it. Whereas if you do it all at once, it feels really good because of course you remember it. You just saw it like 20 minutes ago. But when you space it out, even though it feels a little bit more uncomfortable, it has significant increases. It's been repeatedly studied in study after study, significant increases in our ability to retain that information. So if you watch this whole video and you've taken some notes, don't just leave that until the midterm or whatever. Keep on coming back to it. Give yourself a day or two and then think, hold on. I had already summarized what happened in this video like right after the video and that was okay. I was able to do that. That was an important test of whether I understood the video. But do that again a day later and a couple of days later and a week later. And if you have your notes, you can sort of come back to them and try to look at them as, as minimally as you can and see whether you still understand those ideas and space out your learning. And, that's gonna be really important for your long-term retention and to minimize the set of facts that you're gonna to have to try to cram in in your like prior to the midterm cram sessions, which are usually a lot less effective than students would hope they'd be. All right, so I, I hope these different facts about uh, how to watch math videos was useful. And there's no truly right or wrong way to do it. I'm just giving some suggestions. You gotta decide what works best for yourself.